Next news, Mubarak Bala meets with his legal team. Hashtag free Mubarak Bala. So, for the first time since his arrest, president of the Humanist Association of Nigeria and atheist activist Mubarak Bala has met with his legal team. Bala was arrested on April 28, 2020 for a Facebook post allegedly blaspheming the Prophet Muhammad. This meeting represents a significant step forward in Bala's case and most importantly serves as confirmation that Bala is alive. Humanist International and several other atheist organizations continue to call on the Nigerian government to guarantee Bala's rights that one, Bala must have uninhibited access to his team of lawyers. Two, he should be charged, he should be charged either with a crime or released. Three, if charged with a crime, he should be transferred to neutral territory to ensure his right to a fair trial. So I can give more context to that in a second, but you guys go ahead. Wait, so we thought yeah, yeah, Rivka is clapping. She's me too. But um we thought that he could be dead, right, for a while. Yeah, so about within the span of a week and a half to two weeks ago, I don't think that this was very publicly known, but within atheist organizations, um, there were rumors going around that he had been killed. Um, so other leaders of atheist organizations were um, had heard some news that was spread. It was later not corroborated um that so so wait but but how do we what do we know why it took so long for her to get here right now um they have patently refused to allow him access to his legal team even though a judge has explicitly ordered the state and the police to um give him said access this is in blatant violation to the nigerian constitution and nigerian laws that it took this long um and they it got even after that judge mandated that he have access to his legal team um they still refused and they're basically just spitting on their own constitution um because i believe this is just coming from the memory bank that it is nigerian law that you have to be charged within 48 hours or released mm -hmm. he still has not been charged with a crime so wait really quick do we, do we clarify that this was a bad blasphemy like we you said that right yes i did i can give more detail into the blasphemy if you would like before I, you do that can you read the super chat yes so arjun thank you for the super chat arjun five canadian dollars we appreciate you um for for the updating us on mubarak ball i can't wait for this to end oh, yes. yes well we have to keep fighting for him we have to continue to raise awareness about um the issues in his case and we have to continue to make sure that he um, remains remains alive given um his history of hypertension and the current pandemic um so give some context about blasphemy a little bit before we yes so what happened back in april was that he made a facebook post in which he compared um i believe a local imam or a local preacher to um basically saying that, like this guy was crazy but he wasn't a terry okay that's a code word we have to use a terry ish um uh but he wasn't as terry ish as the prophet muhammad he made that on facebook and then a team of lawyers filed a petition against him and then this petition was filed against him um and uh he was arrested by the courts um in the petition they accused him of um in uh, incitement um or basically what the, how they um do blasphemy in india where they're saying you're spreading communal disharmony and to stop communal disharmony but they basically admitted that in the legal document itself says that muslims will incite violence if i was a muslim like i would be offended by that um so Anyways, um, they arrested him so and then they, they So they arrested him because they think Muslims cannot handle disagreements. Yes. And it so explicitly they, says so. You can got you guys can go look it up. Uh, so in a, in in a in a way to to protect Muslims, they're actually being bigoted against Muslims. In a I way. thought this, it was a very bigoted. <laughs> yeah, there's a bigotry of lower expectations, but go on. Yes. Patently and explicitly so. Um, so 
um, I believe roughly two days later, he was arrested. And um, then he was transferred from, I believe he was originally in Kaduna. He was transferred to Kano State. Now, for those who are not aware, in Kano State, Sharia law is enforced for people of Muslim backgrounds. Mubarak Bala is an ex-Muslim. So they um, still consider him to um, qualify for the application of Sharia law. They have several legal systems, um, and it varies depending on if you come from a Muslim background or if you come from a Christian background. You can be exposed to different types of laws. Um, so because of this, he has to face these penalties as a Muslim. Of course, not only is he facing penalty for blasphemy, he, um, not for this case, but it is Sharia, there's the potential to face penalty for apostasy under Sharia, not under this legal petition. Let me be clear. Um, and so since April 28th, no one has heard from him. There have been many activists on the ground in Nigeria doing amazing work, doing particularly Leo Igwe, who Armin and I interviewed earlier um, in, earlier in the year, Go check that out. I love talking to him. Um, very inspiring. Um, and um, doing everything just to confirm that he was alive at this point. Like there was a, we, a few weeks ago, I covered the story that the New York Times published about his wife not even asking for them to in, explain the charges against him. Like literally just tell me if my husband is alive. They had a six week old baby at the time that he was arrested. Okay. Um, and um, I'm excited that more and more people are paying attention to this case. His um, case is being uptaken by uh, Amnesty International. It is now being covered by USRIF, which is the United States um, Commission on International Religious Freedom, Commission or Council, um, and other major organizations that are putting pressure on the Nigerian government to secure his safety. Humanist International is one of the amazing organizations that is doing a really good job putting pressure on the Nigerian government. And when there were these rumors flying around about him being murdered, um, they said, well, I believe that they were the ones who were able to confirm that he was alive when they were able to confirm that he was alive, which was before he met with his legal team, they explicitly said, they were like, we want to clear up. These rumors aren't true. He's alive. We've had multiple people speak to him. Um, but they highlighted the fact that these rumors would not be able to circulate if the Nigerian government was following through with Bala's rights as a Nigerian citizen. They highlighted these rumors would not be able to thrive if you guys would let him see his legal team, confirm that he's alive, be responsive to our inquiries about his well-being. And I don't know this. I wonder if them calling them out in that way helped push forward him being able to meet with his legal team. Um, so this is a huge step forward. I really hope that things continue to improve in this way. Um, and like I said, his rights uh, as a Nigerian citizen, um, we demand that they are observed. Most importantly, he needs to be transferred outside of Kano State so that he can be tried in neutral territory. I really like how much Susanna knows, like, but that knows the details of this case. Like she, you can tell that she's been following this and she's so passionate about it. Like she's not reading off of anything. She's so familiar with all the details of this case. <laughs> that was just um, all the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Riff, Rivka, go ahead. I was going to say that sometimes those lot, those rumors are actually started by the people holding people captive on purpose because it's a way to sort of destroy the people's supporters and also the person themselves if they say look look at this newspaper everyone thinks you're dead they're saying you're dead you know oftentimes they're like psychological games and if they've been keeping him since april and not allowing him to have contact with anyone in his family not allowing him to speak to his attorney all these things it seems to me they're almost looking for some sort something they can charge him with in, in order to create a charge waiting for that and but i think that maybe the humanist international pressure was helpful 
or maybe I'm wrong about that, you know, that they wanted, they didn't want to have the rumors that they had killed him. So they decided to signal to the world that he was alive. But anyway, it's just really sad because it has psychological damage that it does. Not just the, the being away, the not having contact, all of those things. And I feel like it's on purpose. Yeah, to be clear, I do not think that the rumors of him being dead ever reached publications that I saw, to my knowledge. This was just the internal speak that I'm hearing from other organizations reaching out to me. Um, and I was devastated. I was gutted. Um, and I was hoping that they weren't true. Luckily, they were not corroborated. Um, I don't know if I should share the details of that rumor since it's proven no, to be no. false, but I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, um, no, no. But if you guys would like to learn more about Mubarak Bala, how you guys can help, please go check out freemubarakbala.org. It's a site that's put up in collaboration with Humanist International and Atheist United, and they have a clock featured on the front page that says Mubarak Bala has been detained arbitrarily without charge for 166 days at this point. Wait, what is the link again? Freemubarakbala.org. Mubarak spelled M-U-B-A-R-A-B-A-L-A dot org. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm going to show this. Um, and um, there you can read the latest updates on his case. You can help take action by signing statements, donating to, um, the, uh, donating to his legal fund, and see other signatories and other ways that you can help. Also use the hashtag free Mubarak Bala. Um, like I continue to say, I think that the fight for secularism, true secularism in Nigeria, will be one of the most important movements of my lifetime. Um, and at many other cases we've highlighted in the past couple of months, like the case of Omar Farouk, who is a 13-year-old boy who's been um, sentenced to 10 years imprisonment for um, allegedly blaspheming Allah in an argument with a friend. And... Um, uh, also, the case of 22-year-old Sharif, um, no, no, Yahya Sharif Aminu, um, who is a singer who has been sentenced to death by hanging for blaspheming the Prophet Muhammad recently. And um, so those are also several prominent cases that are ongoing in Nigeria that highlight um, why freedom of speech, freedom of expression is so important, why blasphemy is an imperative, and why I find it is an imper imp imp imperative as an atheist activist to blaspheme, mm. especially on behalf of those people who could be sentenced to death for doing so. Right. But if you can't tell, Suzanne, this is the main um, kind of activism that Suzanne is interested in that she's doing behind the scenes. Um, that she's like following and she wants to make she's helping us focus on a lot of cases that might have gotten um, ignored if she wasn't here. So this is why having Susanna on our team is such an asset.